event, they are going to talk about frugal design and why should we be interested in frugal design because of the fundamental tension, fundamental paradox that we have in today's world when choices are expanding but accessibility and affordability is constricting. So we have more variety of things in the marketplace but we have much less effective choice available to millions of people in the world because they can't afford to buy them, they can't afford to have them, they can't afford to fabricate them. So how do we remove this? How do we resolve this paradox? We must think of design strategies by which either people can design their own solutions, which is wonderful, then they don't need us, they don't need external agencies, they don't need external mediators, or they should be able to afford to make things and if necessary, remake them. So frugality can be at several levels. Frugality can be at the level of materials. That means the amount of material that a design that a product uses or a service uses is much less than what conventionally people have used for the same for meeting the same need. It can also be at the level of method, the process. Process is so frugal, process is so economical that we don't waste time and resources in achieving the end. Frugality can also be at the level of application. So sometimes what happens, not sometimes, I would say many times it happens, you have a mobile phone in your hand, it has maybe 500 features. How many do you use most of the time? Maybe 50. But you pay for 500. You have a Microsoft window program on your computer, those of you who have not yet shifted to the open source, and you have 250 different features. R, word R, design, spreadsheet, what not, sound, animation. And you may not have used more than 15 or 20 features of that one processor, but you pay for 250. Now this makes a licensed copy of many of these software, many of these features, many of these products difficult to afford. So many times frugality is a way of thinking, is an attitude to life is an attitude to products and services such that we realize what is the bare minimum that I need. So let us learn from nature. There's a beautiful statement in a book on biological basis of knowledge which is based on the lifetime work of a famous pathologist. It was translated into English by Rupert Riddle. And what did the author say? The author said, let's look at the, all the trees in the, world, in the world, the branches of the trees. Let us look at fins of all the fishes in the world. Let us look at wings of all the birds in the world. So when you look at the branches of the trees, fins of the fishes, feathers of the bird, what do you notice? And he asked a very simple question. At what angle are the fins, the feathers, and the branches set to the trunk? So imagine I'm a tree, and this is my branch. So what's the range of the angle? And he found that most trees, birds, and fishes, their fins, feathers, and branches were set at the angle ranging from 50 to 90. The entire diversity of the world could be explained by a simple heuristic, which is the range of angle is between 15 to 90. And then he makes a, makes a very interesting statement. Nature has, nature is very parsimonious. It has few designs and it plays with them all the time. I don't know how many of you have reflected on the fact that no two trees are alike. No two human beings are alike. No two fishes are alike. No two birds are alike. And yet, you can see that a mango tree looks like a mango tree, neem tree looks like a neem tree, palm tree looks like a palm tree. So they have a shape which is distinct from another population of the trees, say mango from pineapple, or mango from palm, palm from uh, neem. Similarly, the small plants, herbs like pineapple, tobacco, tomato, 
all of these plants have distinct appearance, but no two plants are alike. So he said nature has, nature is very parsimonious, it has few designs and plays with them all the time. So the basic elements of frugality are not very complex, are not very diverse. But diversity is designed when we combine those elements in various different creative ways. But it's not enough to design things by only looking at materials or only looking at their uh, physical properties, their artifactual properties. We should also look at how the sustainable design will require a very important, very significant synergy between technology, institutions, and culture. Look at this beautiful bridge, double decker bridge. This is the bridge made out of the roots of trees drawn from two sides of the river, Ficus elasticus. Now this species of tree has roots which can be possibly molded. So people need cooperative action, they need to have collective action to cooperate, to develop a mechanism by which the technology of making bridge will fall into place. Technology alone will not make the bridge make happen. You need collective action, so you need institutional structure, you need rules, you need norms, you need belief system, which is shared by the people and who will agree to maintain it. But you also need a culture which looks for creative solutions from the nature. So you need culture, you need institutions, you need technology. Technology is like word, institutions are like grammar, and culture is like thesaurus, variation of the So we have now understood two elements of frugality. One, that we can have frugality at the level of material, method, and applications. Second, that we can have frugality by looking at simple forms, simple shapes, that nature rejoices a great deal in bringing about, and then combine, modify those shapes in different ways. And we also then learned another lesson, which is that technology alone is not necessary or sufficient for making the designs. We also need institutions, we also need cultural context in which the innovations which are frugal can be designed. Now let us look at how would frugality be achieved in our mindset. You know, there's a famous saying of Gandhi, there's enough in this world for everybody's need, but not for everybody's greed. That is one attitude. In Jain, Dharm, Jain religion, we call it aparigra, accumulate only as much as you need. But this is easier said than done. There are people who, would, who are fond of collecting things as number of time, number of times they want to. And I can't grudge them if they want to have lot many books, lot many things, lot many music, CDs or whatever have they wish, they could have that. The question is, frugality would mean invariably a shared perspective. Imagine if I had to have all music CDs with me or music record with me, I would need a huge library of songs. But if I had a mechanism of sharing the songs with my other friends, then not everybody needs to keep the same inventory in duplicate. I keep some, other people keep some, as and when we need, we share, and thereby enrich our life. So shared inventories of products, services, and tools has helped society from time immemorial to live very frugally. The problem arose when everybody wanted to have their own inventories. So that second mindset, that if we can have shared inventories, shared tools, shared products, shared services, then we can have much greater frugality. You must have heard about people who have carpooling, they go to office together, turn by turn, different people will bring the car to the office. So that's another mechanism of frugality. So you can have frugality not just in products, but also in services, and not just in services in terms of how cost effective they are, but how shared they are. Same service, once shared by many people, becomes frugal. But how do you design frugality? You design frugality by looking at the mechanisms, the processes which have reinforcement from this attitude that I'm talking about. Reinforcement of how much do you need, reinforcement of how much do you share, and reinforcement of the last point that I want to draw attention to is what we call as circular economy. What is circular economy? Circular economy implies that we look at the fatigue factor, the factors of the rate of entropy of each product and service, each company. 
and then find a way of re recycling, rejuvenation of these components so that nothing is wasted before time. So Lufthansa many years ago realized, which many airlines should have realized by now, that not each component of an airplane gets uh, lives its complete its life at the same time. So, for example, the seats in the plane have 200 year life. The engine may have 25 year life. The spans may have maybe 25 year life. So, when you junk the plane, when you finish its life, it becomes unserviceable. Why should you waste everything at the same time? So, why wouldn't you take out the chairs, seats from the airplane, refurbish them, and sell them as a household furniture? Now, these seats will live for 200 years. You have reduced the rate of entropy. You have created a circular economy. So circular economy is where every product, every component, every element of what we are trying to use in our life is allowed to fulfill its productive life. So imagine in future, every component of a machine will have a fatigue factor mentioned on that, which essentially would mean that this component, this gear, for example, may have 50 years life. A motorcycle or cycle may have only 20 years life. Take out the gears and recycle them, reuse them, find new innovations in which these products can be used. Grassroots innovations would have been impossible if there was no such economy. Because 99% of the people begin their innovations by using second-hand parts. Before I close, let me tell you the challenge for circular economy to become a very important foundation for frugal engineering is that the regulatory agencies very seldom will allow a product to be certified as fit for human use if it has second-hand parts. So we need new mechanics, new institutional arrangements to legitimize, to support frugal injury. So in the next part of this class, we will discuss what are the methods by which we can try to develop products and services which are frugal, given the framework that I have shared with you, and then we will try to invent new ways, some of which will be different from what I am teaching, some of which will be better than what I am saying, because then the recursiveness of the learning process will take place. I'll learn something from you and hopefully you'll find something useful in this thing.